Oh god. Nope. <laughs> Die. Jesus. G for grenades, maybe? Finally? Oh my god, it look this looks like a Oh my god! <laughs> Wait, you can do that? You can jump off the edge? All you have to do is jump on the lowest fires, you'll never get hit. Sucker. Oh god, we almost died! <laughs> oh my god, we almost killed that thing and died. Damn, that's crazy. Welcome back to another holiday episode of Saturday Afternoon Gaming. I'm your host, Gaming J. And of course, as I said in the last video, we are now on vacation mode. So that basically means every day is Saturday until sometime in the new year when I feel like starting the Thousand One quest again. Um, we always take a bit of time off during the holidays to just play some fun games. Last year I did a fan extravaganza, as I announced in the last video. My life is just so damn busy right now that I honestly couldn't organize such a thing for this holiday season. So I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with the next few weeks, but uh, it'll be a little bit of a just sort of whatever, whatever is convenient for me. And uh, in the coming few, in the in the coming months, I will sort of try and figure out some kind of fan event again because I really love the fan extravaganza we did last year. Just uh, you know, life she gets busy sometimes, guys. Anyway, today I decided to play an, an NES game that had been on my radar for a little bit called Journey to Silius. Fun fact about this game, this actually started off as a Terminator video game. Uh, this is developed by Sunsoft, as you can see here. And Sunsoft originally wanted to make a Terminator game, and they started making it. And then they lost the rights midway through, and they had to totally rebrand it. So we're just going to pretend this is Terminator, because look, there's a nuclear apocalypse that wipes out all of humanity. After many years of space colony development, Jay's father has passed away. Hey, Jay! Uh, that's me. I think the main character's name is Jay McRae. Uh, the evening news reported that Jay's father's death was an accident. Wait, what happened to the sort of nuclear war that annihilated all of humanity we saw like two screens ago? <laughs> hey, there's a 1980s data disc. Jay finds a floppy disc left in his father's room. Where's this story going? <laughs> and you're gonna have to annihilate a bunch of robots as a result. I hear the terrorists are planning against the colony development. Okay. Uh, you must complete my mission if I cannot. Okay. The music even does sound a little Terminator-y. They will pay the price for the death of my father. Also, that city they nuked. We'll also make them punish for that. Okay, so there we go. Intro. Now you can see... Yeah, this was totally supposed to be a Terminator game. You can even see remnants of it here. I mean, we're in the apocalypse. We look like Kyle Reese in the future. I My guess is the way the levels are going to go is we start fighting in the future, and then we eventually um, go into the past, and then we have to fight robots back there. I mean, I don't care if we fight them all in the future. Oh, God. Um, wherever we fight robots is fine with me. Crap, I got hit. Okay, let's just do this. Uh, now, interestingly enough, there actually was a Terminator 1 video game. Oh, God. Um, on the NES, I think the Angry Video Game Nerd covered it in one of his episodes, and it is not a good game. <laughs> it is, like, terrible. It's just sort of funny that, like... Ow, oh, what, what was hitting me there? It's funny that when it comes to, um, like, movie adaptations of uh, games... Oh, that was a mine. I was standing on one over there. Oh, God. I'm about to get killed! Oh god, down I go. Wow, okay, this game's gonna be a little hard. That's okay. I love in old games and they call extra lives rests. This, there's something very nostalgic about that. You don't see... everything is so standardized now. It's all like extra life. Uh, but like rest, man up, free guy. There were all sorts of names for an extra life back in the day. Um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting how like uh, movie adaptations of video games are not based on whether the game is actually good. It's just based on who is paid for the rights. Like, frankly, when it comes to, uh, you know, Terminator, it's like such a, well, I guess, I guess when it first came out, it, it was just sort of like another horror movie. 
Um, a lot of people forget that Terminator was a horror movie when it first came out, but yeah, it was basically just sort of like an average horror movie that came out. People didn't know it was going to be a huge blockbuster than it was, but um, so they might not have cared too much about the video game rights and getting it to the right company. But it's just sort of interesting that it's like, it doesn't matter. Two companies can both try and make an adaptation of a movie. And it's not like the better game is the one that gets it. It's the company that pays more money or like whose uncle, you know, knows the, the movie studio developers or however the deals work in Hollywood. But it's kind of a shame that it's not based on the quality of the game. Truly what they should do is they should say, okay, every company that wants to make a Terminator game, you make your game, you submit it. And we will tell you which one can be branded as the Terminator game. So it's really just based on the quality of the games. And all the other games that don't get the Terminator branding, you just rebrand them as something else, release them, and there you go. And if that model was followed, LGN would have, LJN would have never made a video game in their entire career. Because <laughs> every game they make is crap, and any developer could have made something to outcompete them very easily. Oh god, is this a boss or something? Jeez. Oh my god, damn. We might have to look up some game genie codes for this. Um, I am, by the way, playing the European version of this game, the PAL version, as it is also known. Um, the reason I am playing the PAL version is because in the North American... Oh, I, I kind of like that boss fight, actually. That was a little satisfying. Um, also, I think I detected a, fe a Fester's Quest sound effect in there, which would make sense, because Sunsoft did this and Fester's Quest, you know. Um, can I shoot this? I'm supposed to just keep walking? What's happening here? Is this a bad guy? Oh god, aliens of some kind! Oh, w wait, what are these things? Oh, they're shooting lasers at me. Oh god, he's gonna land on me! Oh god! Okay, we got him. Oh god. Ugh. I'm also getting some, like, uh, Ninja Turtle sound effects here when I hit these aliens. It's sort of sounding like, uh, hitting a boss in Turtles 2, the arcade game. Which, was that Sunsoft as well? I don't remember. Um, anyway, I'm playing the European version because in the American version, the US version, they went ahead and turned this hero guy into even more of a dork. They took his helmet off, they gave him, like, 80s hair. Uh, he's not wearing battle armor anymore. Frankly, I wanted to go with the version that was closest to Terminator as possible. And, you know, oh god, ow. Oh, no! Oh, okay. We gotta be real careful here. There we go. I think the sound effect that you hear when you hit the weak spots on the helicopter is like the same sound effect as when you hit the uh, Technodrome in uh, in the first Ninja Turtles, which I'm pretty sure was Suns. No, that was Ultra. That's Sunsoft. I wonder if all the old like NES companies just shared sound effects or something at one point. Or maybe it's just sort of like how um, all Atari games kind of have the same sound palette. They all have that like. <laughs> Kind of like there's like four or five sounds that every Atari game has. I wonder if that if in the NES era there was like 40 sounds, and you know, because there's more more sound variety on the NES, and uh, you know, the the sound just got continually reused in different games by different companies or something. I don't know. I have off, but I'm totally hearing like Fester's Quest sound effects every time you pick up a power a power up. Here, listen, listen. That was 100% Faster's Quest. Oh, you bastard. Oh, you dick. <laughs> Robot traps everywhere. So it's a shame that they had to rebrand this as a non-Terminator game. So they basically went through and changed a lot of the sprites, is my guess. They might have changed some of the background art and stuff, too. Um, but imagine this guy was like a Terminator walking at you. How cool would that be, you know? Because I would imagine those guys would be the Terminators. They just made them look totally different when they had to rebrand it. Okay, down we go, I guess. Guess we're going down. Also, I feel like um, when they rebranded this... Oh, crap. The, the controls are a little delayed, actually. No. When they rebranded this as a non-Terminator game, I feel like they kind of went lazy with the story. <laughs> like, if I'm being honest. Oh god. Slipped down here. Like, the Terminator 1 story is so cool. Like, the idea, like, humanity gets wiped out. And 
but they actually win the future war. Um, but then the computer that they've defeated tries to send someone back in time to stop their victory. Like, it sounds a bit convoluted, but it's actually, like, uh, quite a cool story. Oh, God. I don't know why I'm just running. I should be killing these things, but... She... Ah, damn it. <laughs> Crap. we continue? Are there continues? Continue. All right, good. As long as there's continues, we don't need Game Genie. Oh, and they... Oh, wait, no. I was gonna say, it even continues you right where you died, but no, this is the beginning of the level, I think. Yeah, I think we're back at the beginning of the level. Alright, so that's fine. We can work with this. We might not have unlimited continues, though, is the only thing that we gotta uh, be aware of. But this time through, I'm not just gonna run past every enemy, I will actually kill them. My god intended. Oh god, ow. Okay, I have like a G thing that's powered up. How do I use it? Oh, select weapon. How do I do that? Machine gun, shotgun. Whoa, hold on. I like how the handgun looks like the zapper. Okay, machine gun selected. Oh my god! <laughs> yes! Yeah, baby. Now we're talking. Oh, that's so cool. It's cool how you have ammo, actually. Very few NES games actually did this. Okay, and then so we can go back to our handgun here. Try and build up, oh God, ow. Build up some more ammo. Here. I wish we had grenades or something. Something missing out. Got that guy. Oh God, ow. Kill this one. Oh yes, more bullets, please. Should try the shotgun next. Oh, ow. Go. Okay, let's go. Got gun on this guy. Oh, oh my God! Wait, what? Wait. I... <sighs> okay, the shotgun is just the spread gun from Contra. Oh, and I'm, we're just wasting bullets. I'm gonna go machine gun. Um, okay, so the shotgun probably has some, oh uh, yeah, probably has value to kill like these things that are like tough to hit. Oh, there we go, that's how you do it. Oh god. Oh god, oh god. Oh, Jesus. Those things are hard. I guess I'm just not very good at this game yet. Anyway, I was talking about storyline. All I was trying to say is like, it's it's funny how they went from like an awesome, cool storyline like Terminator 1 to like, I don't know, your father was killed by terrorists and you gotta like uh, stop them or something. And it's like, what's with all these robots then? It's like, ah, uh, we really have to explain that. It's like the developers just didn't care. They're like, I don't know, robots, who cares? Like a city seemed to be nuked in the opening credits. Is that relevant? And they're like, I don't know. Maybe. Like, you get the feeling they were so disappointed by losing the Terminator 1 license, they were just burned out and they didn't give a shit. <laughs> They're like, I don't know, robots and stuff. What do you want, kids? Just play the damn game. We lost the Terminator license. This game's gonna tank. What do you want from us? Oh, God. You only take one hit? No! Oh, we somehow survived that. Oh, my God, and health. Yes. Oh, they're so stingy with the health. Oh no! Okay, I'm just going for it. Oh, it it follows you. We're screwed. We're screwed. Oh God, no! Two power ups and we died. Damn it. Maybe we will need Game Genie for this. I usually crack out Game Genie for like the really hard NES games, like when we're really making no progress, because it's so disappointing to like play an NES game, and even if it's like hard and unfair or it sucks or something, it's. I mean, for me, I always just want to see what every game is about, you know? Like, that's what motivates me to play more and more of these old games. Um, or, like, watch long plays and stuff, because I watch long plays, too. Like, I know you guys watch my channel, obviously. Oh, God. Bastard. Uh, but I, I watch channels, too. Um, I actually don't really have a go-to, like, uh, uh, you know, 
uh, let's player guy. Um, so maybe that's pretentious of me. Or maybe it makes sense. I mean, to make long plays. Why would I want to watch them? Um, the long plays I watch are when I edit my videos because I have to sort of rewatch what I've done. Oh god! Damn. What a trap that was. This thing. Alright, we're doing pretty good. I good ish. I don't want to say pretty good. Oh my god! Hit him in the head. Okay, this would be the Terminator. Oh you we're about to die. We're about to die. Oh god! We beat him. Hold on, did we get a new gun? Oh, we totally did. That's what that M was. Holy missiles! So on the first level we got M, which I think was machine gun. Cool. Well, let's try these puppies out. Boom. Okay, they do nothing. Uh, I don't want to waste the ammo. Oh, Jesus. No. Oh, God. Oh, God. Ow. Oh, my God. Every shot is hitting me. <laughs> Every single one. Oh, and even the claw got me. Damn it. Game over. Do we get to continue with the boss? You. Age two. Son of a bitch. All right, let me just look up what the game genie codes are, and then let's make an informed decision about whether we want to start cheating here. All right, there was a game genie code called Infinite Lives, and I made the executive decision to uh, activate it. So we now, in theory, could have infinite lives. Um, and other than that, I mean, there's some other things. Uh, some of the other codes were like, start with one life. I don't know why that's like almost every game genie code where there's like a code to have more lives. There's always a code to have less. And I don't know what asshole is entering those codes. Those codes must be the least used codes ever. Imagine being such a dick that you wasted time. Like you're sitting there entering a game genie code to have fewer lives. Like if you do want to prove that you can beat a game without dying, why, why do you need a code to like take your lives away? Hey, you could just kill yourself at the start of the game. Like, is that too inconvenient for you? Um, or B, you could just play the game and not die and who cares? You know, like, it's just such a stupid code. I feel like, uh, I mean, the way the Game Genie works is it basically, um, we have a gun here. Using this thing. Um, the way the Game Genie works is it basically just sort of, um, like, hacks the uh, memory addresses of the NES games. And I'm sure when people were writing the code books, they were just trying random things or they were like looking at the code, trying to find the key variables that they want to manipulate. Um, and once they figured out the life variable, they're like, oh, we can have more lives. And I guess we can have fewer ones. So why not add that into the code book? Like just to pad the code book. Like I swear those codes are in the Game Genie book purely to pad the book. I have never heard of anyone wanting or entering a code to give you fewer lives in an NES game. It's just the stupidest idea ever. <laughs> it's just really dumb. But anyway. Uh, so yeah, some codes gave you um, more lives. You could start with the machine gun. You could start with all these different weapons and stuff. We're not going to do those cheats. We're going to earn our weapons legit. Um, but the only thing that I turned on was infinite lives. This is basically, just this just means that when we do die on a level, we'll get to respawn and we'll get infinite tries. And honestly, I feel like that's how most modern games work anyway. Many games, like many of the modern video games that you play nowadays, like you get on Steam, even if they're retro themed, they've all done away with the life counter. You know, the life counter is so 1990s, 1980s. Like nowadays, everyone, you just always have infinite tries. Why, why limit the tries? Because back in the day, you know why they limited it? So it's like lives came from the arcades where somebody puts in a quarter, you don't want them to be able to play your game forever. You want them to eventually die and have to give you more money. But then when they created home consoles, they were just sort of like, that's the conventions they were using in video games. And lives made sense on the home console, home consoles too, because you often couldn't make like really long games. They had to have some reason for players coming back and playing your game again. So if you only could make eight levels, it's like, well, how do you limit it so that people will actually have to come back? 
and you give them limited lives and limited continues. And they can't just play the game till they beat it. They literally have to get really good at your game. So I think that's, you know, a lot of people talk about how difficult old school video games were. And a lot of it, oh God, I think was just sort of like what they had to do by necessity because of uh, fuck. practical. Oh, we're still alive. No, we're dead. Practical limitations in like game design at the time. But uh, all those those things just don't exist now. Although I just think I lost a life. So hold on. Is my cheat even on? Okay, I just double checked, and I'm pretty sure my cheat is activated. So here's open it works. This first boss isn't too easy. That first level was far easier to breeze through the second time around. Oh shoot! I'm aim I'm firing the wrong direction, taking hits. All right. All right, yeah, all right. <laughs> We're not gonna make it, are we? Oh, God. Die. Die. Stop jumping on me, you a -hole. He's like jumping right where I am. Oh my God, maybe I should move, I guess, is the play. Dear God, I'm gonna die again, aren't I? I I'm, I'm dead, man. I can't shake this guy, Jesus. All right, anyone else? On the tango, I'm like an inch away from dying. If I make one more mistake, I'm dead. So part of the thing that makes this game tricky is like, if you're in a transition and you try and jump, it won't jump. Like I just tried to jump there, now I jumped. I shouldn't mess around right now since we're fighting the helicopter. Um, okay. Wait till that lower one fires. It sort of fires in like a rhythmic pattern here. All you have to do is jump on the lowest fires, you'll never get hit. Sucker! Oh god, we almost died! <laughs> oh my god, we almost killed that thing and died. Damn, that's crazy. Okay, two rests. I don't think this infinite life thing is working. If it's not working, I, there's another way I can hack the game. So we're playing this on uh, the emulator Messen, M-E-S-E-N. Great emulator, actually. I, I really like it for playing NES games. But there is a way to search for memory addresses. And you can basically look for all the memory addresses that are currently holding the value two, which is the number of lives we have. And then when we die, we can say all those memory addresses that had the value two, which one of them now has the value one? And that should hone us down to our, the memory address that's holding on to the number of lives we have. And then what we can do is force that memory address to have whatever value we want. We can give it 50. Or we can say it can never change and it always has to stay at one. Then we'll have one life forever, no matter how many times we die. So that's uh, my little quick tutorial on how you hack uh, NES games with uh, modern emulators. It's really not hard to do. Um, I've used it only a few times. Uh, like, I, I used it, uh, one of the places I, I sort of, oh god, ow. Used it quite a bit was when I was making my Street Fighter 2 uh, car fighting video on my Retro Minigames side series. So in that video, I just wanted to, um, I just wanted to constantly play the the extra life level where you smash a car. But I didn't want to have to play through Street Fighter over and over again. So I basically just uh, sort of hacked, a, hacked, the, uh, hacked the, the game so that it was like always on that level. Um, and it wasn't too hard to figure out. I think I had to go read a document online about how the level codes worked. But uh, once it was hacked once, it was like very easy. Just select a different fighter and off you go play the, uh, play the, the, it was always the car smashing level. You didn't have to worry about anything. It was always the bonus level time. It was great. I think I also hacked Mario 3 when I did the retro mini games where I played nothing but the, um, nothing but the memory game. That card flipping game in Mario 3, I played nothing but that. And to do that, you just have to, uh, you know, have to, but I, I did hack the game, so it, I got tons and tons of points every time I beat a level. That basically made the minigame constantly unlocked. 
candy for me. Yeah, guys, I'm elite Nintendo hacker. I will hack your NES. -ing. This is what I do. God. Go. I feel like, you know what? We have the Game Genie code, but I'm also playing much better. Maybe it's like the Game Genie code gave me the confidence that I needed, but I didn't actually need the code. You know? Like the moral of the story of like all those movies where the character has no confidence. Oh, you know, that, that magic hat didn't actually help you play NES games better. It just gave you the confidence to believe that you would. Um, that's actually a phenomenon called the placebo effect. Used to great effect. But they never name it the placebo effect. They always talk about confidence and stuff. It's placebo. You can do it with sugar pills, too. You can give someone a sugar pill, tell them it will help them with headaches, help them sleep better, give them the confidence to beat a really hard NES level, and they'll do it. Oh, thanks to you. Or you can put whatever you want in chalk, whatever. Make people eat dust. Dust apparently will help you get better sleep. It's all placebo. Anywho, um, all right, there's a boss coming up somewhere around here. You know, now that I know I have this, like, spread gun, it actually... This part oh, God, out. Oh, I just want to use that machine gun forever. I think the boss is actually right here. Maybe I'll use it on him. Or the mini boss guy. Oh, there he is. Die. Die. Oh, yeah. It didn't take a single hit. Although, as I recall, that homing missile sucks. It doesn't do anything against this guy. I gotta fight this guy with old fashioned bullets. Okay. Bullets seem to do nothing. Go. Oh god. Oh wait, what? I wasn't even jumping. Okay. Rest one. Okay, it's time to hack this baby. Alright, let's do this together, then you guys can see the magic. So we want to find something. Okay, currently equal to one. Here are all the memory addresses where that is true. All right, now all we have to do is die, and hopefully, <laughs> hopefully the uh, value will go to zero. We'll get one more shot here. I think we'll have to continue, so then we'll have to look for our life counter value going back up to like three or whatever. Oh, you bastard. Hopefully we can beat this guy though. God, ow. Ow. Oh god, ow. Oh, son of a bitch. Wow, that's really hard. Even with infinite lives, I don't know how we're gonna beat that guy. Alright, we're gonna have to do this level one more time. But now, we know that we have three lives. So... Oh wait, I shouldn't have closed the cheat finder. Alright, we gotta leave this open. So basically, I have to go die right now. Alright, kill me, robot. Trust me, I want you to. I'm gonna wipe out your own species by doing this, because I'm gonna become a god after this. And lives. Alright, now that we died. Now, let's bring back up our cheat menu. Okay, hold on. My my cheat thing, I, I think closing the window screwed me up. So here's what we're gonna do. Here's all the memory values that contain a two. Once this guy kills me, and we'll look for the ones that contain a one. Keep screwing up this cheating thing. Alright, we're dead. That's fine. Now we want to look for the ones. There we go. This one here. We're going to create a cheat to edit this. And we want this value to be three. Now let's make it... Yeah, sure, three. No, let's make it five. No, let's make it nine. <laughs> I can't decide. Um, lives equal nine. That's the name of my cheat. And good. All right, cheat applied. Now, let's see what happens when I die. And this robot takes forever to kill you. There we go. Nine lives. All right, we did it. 
All right, we made our own game genie code. Game genie code enter didn't work for some reason. Whatever. You know what? I consider it like a mini game. A cheating mini game. Oh. All right. Now we're now we're learning how to play though. I feel like I'm getting much more confident in this game. The boss is still going to be quite a challenge, but we'll uh We'll figure that out. At least we now we have infinite tries to get get used to how to beat them. Ow. So we can just sort of, uh, you know, figure it out as we go. Go. Also, memorizing the levels does make a huge difference. In every old uh, NES game, a part of the... Oh, God, ow. Getting better at, each, at the game came from actually learning how the level... Obviously. So, but even just with like a little bit of play, it's like you can figure out quite a bit about a uh, level. Like I, we've only been playing this for like half an hour, and I feel like I'm already getting into moving this, this level. Ow! Not perfect. Ow! Not a perfect group. I will admit. There's some kinks. But uh, you know. Certainly better than when we first started. Ow. I think especially because I grew up with a lot of games like this, there's a lot of, like, satisfaction in going through the loop on, like, a hard game and, like, slowly and surely getting better. I mean, frankly, if we did not have our cheat, this is level two, we can't, we can't beat the boss. We can't even come close to beating the boss. Like, imagine you own this game. Like, it could take you potentially like days to figure this out because it's easy for us because we can just reset i mean you know what frankly if we really wanted we could use save states and stuff but i, I feel like that is like mega cheating um save states are basically like turning in you know like i mean it's, it's a save state it's adding in a game mechanic that just didn't exist in the original game and you know i'm not you know i'm not holier than thou i've used save states for stuff like um i think we all have Especially on really hard games, sometimes you're like, oh, I just want to beat this part. And you're like, you know what? Save states, and you just use that to beat the part. Um, so it's like, I, I like that they exist, but, you know, I'm trying to give this game an honest first go. I mean, frankly, if we really can't beat this boss, we'll save state our way through just so we can actually see a bit more. So, you know. A nice try, robot. Get over here. Oh, I killed him by shooting him in the butt. I think we'll just avoid this guy. I don't feel like wasting shotgun ammo to get him. There we go, that's pretty easy. Oh god, ow. So there's, I think I said, if you're ducking and then you stand up and you go to jump, you can't jump. There's like a weird sort of gap. Like if you're ducking and you press jump, you can jump. But... Get it to... I jump. Now I'm jumping every time. There, I just didn't jump that one time. Did you guys see? I don't know if you saw it. Yeah, there, there's some kind of like weird delayed glitch in the um, in the controls. I'm not gonna use all my machine gun ammo because I want to save some for the boss. And here's my strategy. I'm gonna die on the boss once. Like, surely I'm not gonna beat him now. My life is half used. I'm not even going to bother to use the machine gun. And then we will wait and use the machine gun. I mean, something else we could try and do is look for the memory address that contains, like, number of machine gun bullets and stuff. Oh, wow. Yeah, we're actually doing pretty good here. Oh, this is what I like to see. The boss in, like, the corner. The stupid clock ain't get me. Try. Oh man, we got we actually did pretty good. Okay, so the the tactic is stay in the far left corner. Yeah, nine lives. I want to see. Okay, machine gun. Actually, I'm gonna switch to the machine gun once I know he's vulnerable. It's gonna start firing normal bullets now. So the second we can land a hit, we're landing hits. Yeah. I mean, this thing was clearly some kind of giant terminator.
I'm also trying not to waste bullets. Okay. Right, that's it. Fire to our hearts. Yeah, you get in the corner. Oh, eat it! Okay, that wasn't too hard. See, once you have like one or two shots in a row, it can be trivial to beat these things. But what made NES games hard is by the time you got to the boss, you had so little health, so little lives, you get one shot and you're dead, and you gotta do the whole level over again. So it's like, that's why we would become like, God oh my God, a Terminator. I take it back. They left the Termin they left the bastards in the game. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, the thing that made, uh, the, thing that made uh, the NES game so hard, and the reason you got so good at the levels, even if you weren't great at the bosses, is because... Basically, you had to, uh, well, that's cool. You had to get good at the levels, or you'd never even have a shot at the boss. You wouldn't even have a shot to learn about the boss. Oh, I love that there's Terminators in this. Yes! You go, guys. Oh, that's so sweet. I, I wish the, uh, switching between guns was a little easier. I mean, if this was on the Super Nintendo, you could obviously use L and R. But, frankly, so it's like select pauses the game. I wish select just rotated what weapon you had, and then you could have left start as the pause menu where you could sort of select the weapon this way too. You see what I mean? Like you could have had two ways of selecting the weapon, and uh, I think that would have made it very convenient because like rotating the weapon in mid-combat is good, but if you need to pause, you can, and you can still switch your weapon. See, little... Oh, God. Ow. What the fuck was that? <laughs> little design choices like that, guys. And it's not even like what I'm requesting is a feature that was not possible back then. It's like that would have totally been possible. Ow, damn it. So it's like, if you were an aspiring game developer, little subtle features like that. Things that take almost no extra programming effort. Okay. Ow. I don't know how to get past those things. Um, that can make the difference between, like, a decent game and, like, a game that people are like, ooh, I really like this. Like, when the when the controls and everything is, like, very fluid, very intuitive, very automatic, people don't have to spend a lot, a lot of time figuring stuff out. I find, like, that... Basically, that can open you up to the possibility of the game being good. So not every game with good controls is a good game. But certainly, you could make a good game bad if you gave it bad control. So, if you're a game developer, you want to take as many barriers from between the player and your game as possible. And just little design touches like that. How can we make the game more convenient? How can we make the controls even more fluid, you know? Think about these things. I don't know why I'm giving you all a lesson, as if you're all game developers. Uh, or any of you are. I don't even know. Maybe nobody is. But... Uh, I mean, frankly, after playing a thousand some odd video games <laughs> over seven years, oh god, uh, I, I don't think I'm an expert. You know, I certainly didn't go to school for this or anything, but I have opinions now, so that's got to count for something. Um, and yes, we we have played uh, over a thousand games on this channel. Um, in the Thousand and One Quest, we've only played like 600 and something, 60, 50, something like that. I forget the exact number. I don't even keep track closely anymore. It's uh, the game titles I have generated through an Excel sheet, uh, like the titles that I use on YouTube. But I know we're in the six... <laughs> we died to a wall spider. I know we're in the six, the late 600s, um, and in the summer we'll be hitting 700. So, I mean, that's a lot of games, but remember... The Thousand and One Quest is not the only thing I do on my channel. So I also have my Saturday afternoon gaming series. I also have like holiday things that we do. We do like summer side series, all sorts of stuff. Um, and so yeah, if you add up every game I've ever played on my channel, we are I think over a thousand at this point, which is crazy, crazy and awesome and yeah, crazy and awesome. I think that's a good way to describe it. Die, robot. They also kind of look a little bit like Robocops, actually. Which is kind of funny because in some comics in the 90s, Robocop fought Terminator. Terminator versus Robocop was the thing. But, ow. Run, run, run. <laughs> There's no point in fighting our way through that. We'll just take more damage. Jesus. Oh, God. Hi. 
I guess we should have used like homing missiles or something. Yeah, I'm super stingy with the ammo weapons because they're limited. I think what would be cool is if there was some way to not have ammo be a thing, or if ammo was more plentiful. I mean, I guess it would make the game too easy because some of those weapons are really powerful, but yeah, it would be nice if you could, you had a bit more license to use your weapons more. Because um, I feel like I just, I don't want to use them on anything but like a boss or a really difficult situation because they are so valuable. And then the irony of the weapons being so good is that you never use them. I feel like this happens to me all the time. I'm kind of a hoarder in video games. I hoard power-ups and stuff and items. So like in games like, I think in The Last of Us, uh, you could hoard like inventory items. Or like in Fallout, you hoard stim packs and ammo and stuff. And I would never use my really good weapons. I always had some like crappy weapons that I would use. <laughs> and my best weapons I would save and then I'd like never use them, <laughs> you know? So maybe that's more more in me than the game developers at that point, though. Crap. Like, there I should have used something. Luckily, I will always have nine lives. Always be a nice, healthy nine. Let's start using some uh, weapons here. Rockets. Rocket launcher. Where's that from? That's uh, somebody saying it with that accent. Rocket launcher. I'm a gamer. Ow. Shoot, where's that from? I want to say, like, uh, I'm kind of like multiplayer game. Not Half Life. Halo, right? Rocket launcher. No, wait. Is it? <laughs> Do they say that in Halo? Oh, God. Hey, and Halo's like a game that I really like. I think in the multiplayer they say it like that. They rock it alone. Uh, anyway. Uh, oh. oh god. Oh my god, doesn't even... Get him. Son of a bitch. You can kill something. Rocket launcher. <laughs> rocket launcher, you suck. You failed. You screwed me again, rocket launcher. Oh god, ow. Landed right on that thing. We go back here so the screen scrolls. One deadly thing in platformers is when you're on the far right and the screen is scrolling right, you do not want to be there. That thing. Things are actually kind of annoying. This thing looks like an alien robot, or like an Ed 209 almost, like a flying Ed 209. Oh, Terminator. I like how the Terminator's like nine feet tall. I mean, the original idea for a Terminator was it was supposed to be an infiltration unit. It was supposed to like blend in with, uh, you know, normal people. I think eventually, originally, in fact, James Cameron didn't want like the big bulky Arnold Schwarzenegger to play the Terminator. He just wanted like an everyman, like a skinny dude. So it's like kind of funny that in a way that it was like Arnold, cause it's like this guy is supposed to pass for just like an average Joe. <laughs> and like sneak into the rebels or the human base and not be noticed. But he's like this big bulking Austrian dude. <laughs> so it's sort of in a weird irony, having like nine foot tall Terminators here totally makes sense. It makes sense in that it doesn't make sense, which makes sense. God, we're about to die, son of a bitch. <laughs> you stupid flying robot. Nine lives though. Okay, good, we start over here. Thank God this this game has like checkpoints mid level. The infinite lives thing really helps as a result. So yeah, I think this is this this is a considered to be a very hard NES game. I mean, as you guys can see, if we didn't have infinite lives, we would be making no progress. We'd be on level one and two still. Like level one, I can be. Uh, I think I could get that down to beating it without losing a single life. And I might have even beat it beaten it once or twice. I forget now already. But did we beat it once or twice without losing a life together? Might have. Um, but like, you know, level two, forget about it. I don't even know if I ever would have figured out that boss. Maybe with enough practice we would have finally got him. But it would have been a long, hard route. Oh god. Kill that thing, please. Oh, we lost the health. <laughs> Stop homing! <laughs> Wait, what? 
The missiles, oh God. The missiles home, but they don't make good decisions. They're homing at the wrong thing. They fall in with the bad kids. Well, missiles are just, they're, they're not, they're not thinking what's happening. Bad, poor choices in life. I want to make poor choices. I feel like in high school. Oh god, what is this? Wait, that's a uh, machine gun. Mach machine gun, I think, is my my favorite weapon. Yeah, eat it. Eat it. Okay, go down, go down. You go down already? Oh god. This isn't gonna die? <laughs> okay, we got the laser. Or I assume laser stands for L. For L. <laughs> laser stands for L. Alright, look at this. Okay, out. Go. Go. Okay, this is a good spot. Out. Okay, you gotta wait till that center one fires, and that's when you wanna go. Because the center one's the only one that can hit me when I'm doing this. It's kinda cool. I feel like maybe this was fighting Skynet in the original Terminator game. Oops. Not following my own advice. Wait for the second one to fire, man. Looks like diagonal lasers can't even touch me. Boom! Oh, we beat that boss in one go! One go! So much easier than the second level boss. That was pretty fun, actually. I like that boss. That was cool. I wonder what the L is, though. One complaint is that you get a new weapon, then you go to the boss fight, and you are out of ammo. I wish they refilled your ammo right before the boss fight. Alright, here's the laser gun. Um, ow. Okay, so the laser gun, like, goes through enemies. Alright, that makes sense. Oh my god, it's like a Terminator alien. Whoa, that's so cool. It's like a Xenomorph Terminator. <laughs> well, let me tell you, Skynet, I don't think you're infiltrating the Xenomorph Hive. Oh god, ow. Something tells me you send those robots into the Xenomorph Hive, they come back melted with, with acid. Oh my god, what is that thing? I don't even know. Kill it all. Oh god, ow. I feel like in the 80s, it was like Terminator, Robocop, Aliens, and Predator. Those were like the badass movie monsters. You know, like in, in our parents' day or our grandparents' day, it was like, you know, um, Dracula and uh, a mummy and, uh, you know, whatever. Wolfman, it's a guy who needs a shave. Um, but in our day, it was like, you know, and if an alien predator who comes to our planted to hunt for sport and pulls people's spines out of their column. The Wolfman's just like a hair, really hairy dude. Yeah. Um, like imagine, okay, all the team-up movies that we had in like the 90s, like Alien vs. Predator, I guess that was early 2000s and stuff. Imagine having like a Wolfman vs. Predator. <laughs> or like a Terminator vs. Mummy. <laughs> oh man, that should totally exist. Terminator versus Mummy. <laughs> or, or Robocop versus Dracula. Dracula goes to bite Robocop and like breaks his teeth off because it's like really. The only thing that this human that's left in Robocop is his brain and the facade of a face. He doesn't have like a fleshy neck. Now, that'd be awesome. Then uh, Robocop's just like, your move, creep. And, like pulls out his gun and like blasts Dracula in the chest with like a thousand bullets. And the funny thing is Dracula would be like, oh, those don't kill me, but goddamn they hurt, you know, like, like just, Robocop's not even trying to kill Dracula, he's not even bothering to get a stake, he's just riddling him with bullets, causing immense pain and damage. That would be awesome. That's the movie I want to see. Forget about Alien vs. Predator, man. Give me Alien vs. Swamp Thing. That, that would be hilarious. But, uh, anyway, I, I digress. Um, I was, I was going to talk about high school for a bit there and say, uh, uh, that, uh, I feel like in high school I did make some bad decisions, but I mean, like, bad decisions that, like, kids are supposed to make, 
you know, like I snuck out to parties and I had some drinks underage with friends and, uh, you know, we went, we did all sorts of like, you know, went to, went to the movies and stuff and like hung out at uh, fast food restaurants late at night and bothered the employees and stuff. Like we were jerks. Like all high schoolers are a bit half jerk. Half kid, half jerk. That's a high schooler. Um, but I don't think we ever did anything malicious, first of all. And we never did anything, like, really bad. You know, like, we never did, like, like uh, you know, like, drugs or anything like that. Um, I mean, like, you know, people smoked some marijuana back in the day, but nobody was doing, like, speed balls, parties or anything. Like, people had some beers, and they got tipsy, and made out with a girl, you know, like, like classic, you know, like, classic stuff that kids get into. Oh, bastard. Those flying Terminators suck. Um, I don't know why I was thinking of talking about all that high school stuff. It just sort of came up naturally. Um, by the way, this music right now... Oh, God! <laughs> Thank God for the extra lives there, huh? This music right now really feels Terminator-y. Like, isn't that very Terminator-y, that music there? I think so. Oh, God. Oh, God. Wow, I can't believe I survived that. All right. So the fact that we're earning a, a unique weapon on every level makes me believe there's only like five levels or something. We might be nearing the end. Oh, God. Okay. And I can only imagine what's coming next. We've had Xenomorph Terminator. I can't even fathom what will come next. But I do, I do love the uh, sort of robots they've come up with. This also, by the way, what does this have to do with the guy's father? The guy's father who died, the whole plot of this game? Like, terrorists killed your dad or something? Crap. Um, are, are the robots the terrorists? <laughs> what? It makes no sense. The plot of this game is is so phoned in, it's unbelievable. Frankly, I mean, I, I'm certain they must have felt so depressed that they lost the Terminator license that they were just like, forget it, whatever. But it, it really doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, but as far as games go, it's pretty good, I'd say. I'm willing to bet this is... I've never played the first Terminator game on NES. I've only watched the Angry Video Game Nerds episode on it, which is hilarious. James Rolf is such a funny guy. I think pretty much anyone who likes watching gaming on YouTube has had to have seen at least some angry video game nerd. At least some. Um, and, you know, actually, I wonder, is there anyone out there who doesn't like him? I feel I, like, I guess I'm just take for granted that he's universally enjoyed, but is there anyone who, like, finds his videos, like, tiring or, like, overly negative or just don't like the guy for some reason? I don't know. Um, I mean, I obviously like him. I, I think his videos are hilarious. I've watched all of his videos more times than I can count. Love to meet him one day. Say, hey man, you're cool. I mean, I don't know what I'd say to him, but I'd. I mean, I guess part of why I have my own channels as of him, you know, like I think a lot of YouTube gamers watch James Rolf. He was. It's odd. Like you can be, you can now be nostalgic for the angry video game nerd. We've come, we've come so far. He, he would, he was playing like old nostalgic video games. Okay, let's try a laser weapon here. Now we can be nostalgic for him, literally. At the thing? What the? Come on. Yeah, there we go. We have so little life left, we're like trading bullets for life. Probably right near the boss. Well, the boss is just gonna kill us. See it. Oh, hello. Oh my god. Oh, I'm alive. Oh, no, he's. Oh, wait, what is this shit? <laughs> he just is like homing in on me. Jeez, man. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I've watched uh, the Angry Video Game Nerds uh, episode about the first Terminator game, and it looks horrible. Uh, but you know what? The thing is, like, it it still doesn't dissuade me from actually checking it out someday. Like, I might check it out someday. But I just feel like, having not played that other game, and from what I've seen, this game does look far superior. Like, this should have been the Terminator 1 game. Uh, if only one could be made. But, 
Yeah, as I say, I, I do like to try things. And for instance, I know like, like Mylon Secret Castle, the angry video game nerd ranted against uh, at one point, but I played that one last last Christmas for my uh, holiday extravaganza event. And I actually found that game not bad. It wasn't like my favorite game, but uh, it was, you know, I guess if you just if you just sort of watch the angry video game nerds videos and we're like, oh yeah, that game sucks, that game sucks, I'm never gonna try any of these. Um, you would miss out on a few a few games I consider like not bad actually. Oh my god. god. Are we gonna be able to kill this thing or is it gonna get us? I don't know how you're supposed to do this. Hold on. I need power of the machine gun. This is just doing like little damage to us. Oh there we go. Oh god. Nope. <laughs> Die. Jesus. G for grenades, maybe? Finally? Oh my god, it look this looks like a Oh my god! <laughs> Wait, you can do that? You can jump off the edge? Okay, that's that's not how you fight that boss. This totally looks like a boss at a Contra. Okay. Interesting. Oh. Nope. Oh, okay, that's not the end. Okay, you want to kind of stand back. Just shoot when you jump. Easy. And I feel like boss number two is way harder than all of these. I gotta get my time. Oh. oh my god. As I just say how easy it is, I die instantly. I just really gotta focus on uh, watching the uh, laser beam. My attention was being diverted to looking at where I was shooting, but I'm now I'm like laser focused, just staring at the blue beam that's building up. I'm just gonna assume it'll all work out if I fire every time I jump. You know, if I were this alien, I would look at my strategy and say, hmm, this doesn't seem to be working. Maybe I should either stop opening up my exhaust port, or I should start firing in a more random pattern, or I need to move. Because frankly, this is some of the worst boss mechanics I've seen. <laughs> Not in that it's like super easy, because it's like the timing is very precise. Like you do have to like be on top of it. And you can fall off the platform. Like I didn't think that was like a terribly shitty boss or something. I've seen way worse. But just sort of funny from like the boss's perspective, he's just doing the same strategy over and over and just totally getting owned. He's like, I'm okay with this. Final stage. Oh my God, and it's an auto scroller. We have the grenade launcher. I wanna see this baby in action. Don't mind this auto scroller. Oh, lava puking machine. Oh God, right into the lava. Oh god, right into the lava again. Okay, oh god, no, right into the lava again. Oh, right into the lava again. This, uh, can you do worse at this level? Oh god, again. Every single one got me. Son of a bitch. I gotta say that was quite funny. I really want to fire this grenade launcher, but there's nothing to kill. So my, here's one other complaint I have. You get all these cool weapons in this game, but I feel like you don't really have a ton of, oh God, oh, oh, oh God. Okay, we're firing one. It did nothing. Jesus. You get all these cool weapons and you have nowhere to use them. Like we have the grenade launcher now. I wish we could take the grenade launcher back to level one and replay the game with it. I mean, maybe there'll be a, a game plus mode or whatever. God. Okay, let's try this. I'm gonna wait for it this time. Oh my god, I, we still got hit! We're gonna die to screen crunch! Okay, I'm just going for it, man. Every single one. Oh, and I have something in my eye. I'm trying I'm playing this game one-eyed right now. Oh god, rub my eye. Oh god, no! <laughs> I was too busy rubbing my eye. What the fuck? Oh my god, of all the levels to get something in your eye, it's the auto scroller. Hold on. Oh. 
Oh, don't you just hate it when you get like a piece of dust in your eye or something? I've had that happen when I'm driving. And then you're like, you're driving like one eyed like a pirate while you're like rubbing the hell out of your other eye. And you're just like, yeah, it's not good. Okay, as soon as you jump, these things turn on. That's why they get me every time. So, oh my god, I was trying to jump to lure that one to turn on, and I got hit twice for doing that. Whatever, let's just get to the next checkpoint. <laughs> this is me playing this game at this point. Every single one. Oh, and I'm still firing grenades. Goody. All right, hopefully there are checkpoints in this level, and I'm not required to uh, learn... Uh, how to get past that part. Although it's probably like a very simple trick and then you can get by it. Jump, jump, jump. Go jump. Alright, hopefully we're now at a checkpoint. Those fire pits are well behind us. So I guess if this was a Terminator 1 game... Oh crap. It was all themed in the future, so I guess you were playing as Kyle Reese the whole time. Oh, thank God, a checkpoint. Um, so you never did go back in time and fight the Terminator. That's a shame. If this was a Terminator game, I'd say that's one other complaint I have. Um, but, I mean, that would require a whole different, like, level of mechanics and stuff, so... I mean, the future wars are always the easier thing to translate to video games, frankly. How do you translate, like, a cat and mouse game of, you know, Predator and Prey? Uh, oh, shoot. God. Oh, God. There we go. Yeah, how do you translate a cat and mouse game of Predator and Prey to an NES game? NES games have to be simple. You have to walk in one direction and shoot a gun to kill a guy. You bastard, I thought that. Oh, my God. You have to walk in one direction, shoot a gun to kill many guys, and... <laughs> and that's about it, yeah. Yeah, you have to, you, sometimes you have a life bar. Go, go. Go, go. There's like no enemies here. We got this awesome grenade launcher. Nowhere to use it. We're at a boss now, though. Be vulnerable to grenades, I wonder. Oh, that kills you. Oh, you what? You have to stay in that tiny. Wait. What? So, this is a boss. Look at the amount of screen real estate he takes up. Oh, we just killed him. Grenades did it. Like, I have to stay in this tiny little corner. Can I walk over this way, maybe? Am I supposed to? Alright, better not touch this giant... <laughs> it's literally a rocket ship the size of the screen. Okay. Sit in here. Anything else to kill? Oh, does he have a weak spot? Oh! He has another weak spot on his butt, too. We'll get it. All right, now we have some room to maneuver, finally. Oh, get back here. Fly up. There we go. All right, that's, that's the boss. <laughs> oh, that wasn't the land of the, okay, I was gonna say. Oh my God, it's a Terminator. Okay. I am sad that we did get an awesome grenade launcher and we never had a chance to use it. Come on, buddy. You can't hit me. Oh, shoot, he got me. Okay. Also, I wish there was a way to... Okay, well. ah, go, go. Oh, there we go. Look, he can't hit me. I'm actually good at this boss, oddly enough. Ow. No, oh, he got me one. Get him. Get him. Get him. No. Okay. He can get he can land a hit or two. Oh god, oh god. He met him. Oh, there we go. That's what you gotta do. You wanna do that like jump over him. Kill him. 
Oh god. Shoot him! Shoot him! He's so close to dying, I think. Oh, you bastard, he got me. Okay, I gotta work on my timings. When he gets close, I'm gonna wait for him to, like, duck down. Can you get this right? Yeah, there you go. As soon as he ducks, you kind of jump over him. Yeah, there you go. Then he can never hit you. There we go. Ow. It was a little slow there. There we go. Yeah. We got this. We can, in theory, fight this guy indefinitely. Yeah, eat it, buddy. You're never gonna hit me. I'm the gingerbread man. My strategy is run, run. Fast and you'll never hit me. And Kyle Reese, they call me gingerbread. <laughs> That's his, like, uh, army nickname. Mr. Gingerbread. He's so wily and elusive. He also smells of... Which is what I imagine Kyle Reese would actually... Boom! We did it! Two tries and we figured the boss out. Boss 2 in this game, I maintain, is the hardest boss. <laughs> I mean, maybe we're biased because we got multiple tries on every boss we encountered ever since we turned the cheats on. But, um, yeah. Journey to Silius! And I guess, does it, what, what bearing does this have on our father? Nothing. <laughs> right into the end credits. Journey to Syllabus, the best Terminator NES game you can play. Um, the director was Vegas Chow Mun Sun. Wait, what? The guy's name was Vegas? Programmer, Nom Hero Kun North River Sleepy H. Are those, those are separate people. That's not one name, right? Also, who, whose name is Sleepy H? Yuri Adetan Ibareke and Masashi... I, are these first, last names, nicknames? What's happening? <laughs> Craziest credits ever. About SS. What? Hold on here. Special thanks to Kitachin, Ring Ring, Mac, Right Hand, Nori, Hero, Ass, Ass, She, Ass, He, <laughs> Ass, I, <laughs> and Players. Oh my god, presented by Sunsoft. Well, those credits were actually pretty weird. I love it. I love how, like, everything in the 80s is just, like, poorly translated Japanese. Or, like, I'm sure those were funny Japanese jokes that make no sense when you convert them to English. That is really fun. Um, Journey to Silius, best Terminator game you can play on the NES. I'll go on the record and say that right now, even though I haven't played all the NES games. There you go. Um, it was fun. It was cool. It was very hard. Definitely without cheating like me, uh, you are probably in for a much longer experience. You have to get much better at the game. But the bosses, I think, are supposed to be like the hardest part, and they're very doable. They all have, I would say, good classic NES-style patterns. Oh, and look, you do get to play the game over again, but you don't get any of your weapons. Okay, major complaint of the game, the grenade launcher... You earn it, and you, you you have one opportunity to use it, which is a boss. Or, I mean, there's two, there's two bosses. The big flying ship, and then the Terminator guy. But that's it. That's literally it. You have no opportunity to enjoy your weapon. So if there is a major complaint to this game, I would say, as cool as all the weapons are, the ammo system's a bit stingy, and there's just not opportunity to use the later weapons very much, so... <laughs> oh my god, we got owned there. I almost wish by the time you got your sixth weapon, it was like Mega Man, and now you had to go through like three more full levels with being fully decked out. Because that's how Mega Man works. There's like nine bosses to kill. You get all your weapons, and then once you have all the weapons, and you gotta do the Wily levels, and it's like five or six more levels with different bosses, and it's like now you have to like use all your weapons. And I always liked that about Mega Man. It wasn't just like, and now here's the final boss, and there's no opportunity to enjoy any of your weapons. Also, in Mega Man, you can get the weapons in any order. So, like, if you really like the freeze gun, you can go get that first and use it on all the other levels. But this one is, like, the grenade launcher. You have to get it at the end. And then by the time you have it, the game is over. So, I don't know. Not a perfect game. 
But again, I would say probably the best Terminator game you're going to play on the NES. It was fun. I liked it. Uh, what do you guys think of this one? Did you play this back in the day? If so, share your comments, memories, and thoughts down below. Oh, God. First I had something in my eye, now something in my throat. What is happening to me today? Guys, I hope you had fun with this one. We will be back soon with yet more vacay games. That's short for vacation. And uh, other than that, <laughs> I'm going to go drink some water. Oh, God. All right, we'll see you guys soon. Peace. Oh, God, right into the lava. Oh, God, right into the lava again. Okay. Oh, God, no, right into the lava again. Oh, right into the lava again. <laughs> uh, can you do worse at this level? Oh, God, again. Every single one got me. Son of a bitch.